Hi guys, Joshua here with Inverted G. Just want to let you know that I'm concerned about your welfare and how you use your glues, knowing what they are, knowing when to use them, and how to avoid some really tough spots using your glues. First, I'll start with my Type Bond 2. I love Type Bond 2, it's great for wood, and uh, you know, it's also great for foam. It's great for foam and using wood to foam bonds or any foam to foam bonds that you're going to use that are going to be involving sanding. So the other glue that I, that I use, I pretty much use these hand in hand, but I love Gorilla Glue and I love white Gorilla Glue. It dries faster, it expands a lot so that it fills joints, uh, so it fills gaps as well, and it adheres really, really well. Uh, you can also use Gorilla Glue for any number of things. It can bond metal, it can bond other things, but I pretty much exclusively use it for foam and wood. Uh, but it's difficult to sand. That's why I use the tight bond. So using these two together can really make your construction very strong and very fast. With those aside, we'll go on to Formula 560. Now Formula 560 is primarily used as a canopy glue. And it says, world's best canopy glue, right there on the bottle. But I use it from time to time for canopies, but I can also use it for foam adhesion as well, where it's adding details and things like that, maybe something that's not as critical. Um, but yeah, I save this for very rare occasions. That's why it's very, very full. I've had it for a long time. Next up is my 5-minute epoxy. 5-minute, 30-minute, doesn't really matter. 5-minute sets up quicker for me, so that's why I use 5. I usually work pretty fast when I'm assembling my models. And usually I only use it for something that's going to be a quick job, where um, I don't want the foaming of the, of the uh, Gorilla Glue, but I want a really nice bond, something that's not going to happen with the tight bond. So that's what I use for those things. I also use JB Weld, which is a two-part epoxy. Mix it with a Q-tip on a piece of aluminum foil, scrap piece of foam, something like that. Um, but I use it primarily for metal. I'll take a bit of, uh, of copper wire and I'll wrap it around the two pieces and I'll apply my JB Weld and it'll hold very strong. You also want to make sure that the metal pieces are clean because if they're not clean, you're not going to have good adhesion. You also want to sand it. So sand your pieces, make sure they're clean, and then apply the JB Weld. Also you have your CA. Lots of people use CA for quick fixes. Some people use it for construction for wood just because it cures faster. I don't use it all that often because I primarily build with foam. The foam that I build with Gorilla Glue, Super Glue will melt it. Any other CA glue will as well. But it's good for those kinds of quick fixes where it's wood to wood or something like that, fixing a prop. It's really great for bonding carbon fiber rods. Uh, so that's what I primarily use it for. The other glue that I use is Super 77 Spray. Now this the frustrating thing about Super 77 is the new formulation, about 10 years ago they changed the formulation, maybe longer than that, but it has acetone in it, and acetone will melt your foam. So the important thing when applying 77 is 18 inches. Now you're going to get a lot of overspray with 18 inches, so make sure you do it outside where it's going to ventilate well. You're not going to care because the grass is going to grow and you can cut it away. Um, but just use it sparingly. I use it primarily for tacking two pieces of foam together where I'm trying to make a temporary sandwich where I can, the great thing about 77 is you can wire cut with the glue. All the other glues you can't wire cut. So if you want a thick piece of foam, take two inch foam and stick it together and you can wire cut it. And you can also use it with Dollar Tree foam I'm in the middle of a build right now, and this is actually two layers of Dollar Tree foam that I use Super 77 on. I applied it to both sides very sparingly, and then sandwiched them together. And I, before I did that, I made sure to try to ventilate it, try to get the acetone to evaporate away so that it doesn't melt the foam as quickly. 
And then, after I sandwiched it, I applied some weight and pressure to it. Because the acetone, even though it's very slight, it will melt the foam slightly, but it can cause the foam to bend. So make sure that you apply weight to your foam when it's curing. So those are the primary glues. I also use solder to solder uh, metal joints together for landing gear and such like that. But those are the main glues that I use. There are lots of different things you can do with foam. Ask around. Ask me. If you want to try something, just try it. Most of the parts that we use, the foam, the balsa, it's generally pretty inexpensive. So if you have an idea, just try it. Don't be afraid. If you find a different glue, great. If that works for you, great. These are just some of the things that I use and I make scale models, I make fun models. I've got a Funder and Lightning right here basically built almost exclusively with Gorilla Glue. I use the Gorilla Glue to bind my canopy to my frame and again if you're going to use Gorilla Glue, if you're going to use it for plastic make sure you sand it, make sure it's clean, but overall if you find something that works, use it. I'm all for building. I love building more than I like to fly, but uh, I just want to share with other people what I enjoy, and that's using my glues. My kids come to me all the time because I know my glues. I know how to fix their toys when they break, and it's part of the fun in life as well. Building our models, sharing them with our families, and being able to use the glues that we so preciously and covetously keep in our workshop. Have a great one. Thanks for watching.